18 minutes after 7. Happy New Year, everyone. It's Friday, December the 31st. 11 is all we're going to get. Six below tonight, so you know the drill. On the line with us, uh, I don't think that we were talking about this. His name is Andy Martin, and he's running for president. And he is um, a guy who um, is after my own heart by looking and seeking out the truth. What is the truth of what's been dubbed a nativity story of Barack Obama? Now, I ask the, set the question up, don't you find it fascinating that the governor of Hawaii, who said his top priority was to torpedo the birthers, now his top priority is the economy. He doesn't, he's gone, Mom, and he won't talk anymore about this, only after the Obama family arrives in Hawaii. Um, your, your take on that? Well, there's no question that they don't know how to handle this issue, but they recognize that it's a major political problem. And they all, I think they also recognize um, that I'm a major political problem for them. During the 2008 campaign, I was the only anti-Obama activist uh, who was raising these issues that Obama's people attacked by name. They went on Fox News and attacked me and said I was no good. But, but why, does, why does that governor change his mind or go mum? Uh, he was probably told that the way he had presented the issue had boomeranged on them. There's no question that the Abercrombie statement he wanted, he, oh, if only I could, was free to do what I want, I would release the original document. Of course he's free to do that. Of this course, is President right. of the United States. Of course. Uh, this is an, an, a national archive. It, most people, if it was George Bush or um, whoever, Nixon, you'll find that the original documents are in archives. They're, 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 they're in, you know, back behind glass. Uh, um, if you got elected to be president, uh, I'm not sure where you were born, but the local town or the state library historical society would probably put your birth certificate in the historical society. They wouldn't be hiding it and saying it's secret. Would their hospital put a plaque up, this is the birthplace? Of- Absolutely, that was what we said. Why is there no plaque at Kapiolani? And the reason is he wasn't born there. Did his mother maybe go there to a maternity clinic? I, I wouldn't have a doubt that that's possible. Mm-hmm. But was he born there in the clinic? Did a doctor sign Kapiolani and doctor such and such? I don't believe that's true, and I think that's what he's hiding. And I want to point out, I haven't seen the original, oh, no. so these are my informed opinions. They're let, not me, let, me, let me throw you one more. Sure. Er- Abercrombie also, in that interview, those printed interviews, said, and I'll read this to you. He says he remembers seeing Obama as a child with his parents at social events. The first question I would have is, what event were you attending, or events, because he makes it plural, where you saw Stanley Ann, baby Barack, and Senior together because we know, factually, she's left the rock certainly before the kid's three weeks of age, maybe even sooner. She bat- goes to Seattle. Absolutely. So what were these social events that the, he saw the, uh, the, uh, the loving family together at? Well, I'll give you a, a better sucker punch. Uh, if you saw the Chris Matthews thing, you saw the I little did. left-wing bobblehead there, saw David that. Korn. Right. Oh, well, it was in the ad. I'm sure there was a conspiracy 48 years ago no. that they put an ad in the paper. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? The only person that's actually been to the address that's listed in those birth announcements is me. Yeah. Have you ever seen a picture of the location? Have they ever told you who lived there? Well, Have they ever oh, documented? I know, who li- I, I know who lived there, I mean, but I've never seen a picture of the house. Okay, well, I've been there. I have pictures okay. of me outside the location. Right. That was his grandparents' place. Now, what married man? They don't would list the address of his in-laws as, right. as the birth of if you were, I, I don't know if you're a dad or not and yeah. I don't know if you get along with your in-laws and I don't know if you're a father but mm-hmm. I'm sure that when your kid was born you didn't list your in-laws address mm-hmm. uh, well, and as, they never as, lived together they were never married and never lived together exactly Obama himself had a, a, a separate residence he's listed in the Honolulu directories you can literally go sure, there absolutely. and find and I've got copies of this mm-hmm. stuff in our research library where he, these people never lived together. That's why I don't actually believe, and I want to stress this is not a statement of fact, it's an opinion, that Barack Obama is not really the biological father. But by saying that, I have to say that if you accept my belief that Frank Marshall Davis is the biological father, then he is constitutionally eligible to be president. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a, a backward and a forward. Um, so, you know, I, a lot of times, like CNN once said, well, if Frank Marshall Davis is his father, then under Islamic law, he's not Muslim. And I said, yeah, that's true. I said, but I'm concerned about the truth and the facts. I'm not concerned about right. the politics of so, it. So where were these, and I think it's another one of the reasons why this governor shoots his bazoo off, and now, like, 
Bill O'Reilly or Glenn Beck now has to back the play, and he can't because somebody's going to say, somebody, not those guys, those laydown guys on TV, but somebody that's done the research yourself, uh, Corsi, numbers of people are going to say, what social events, Governor, were they or were there? And when were, they were taking a baby. You. When they were smoking dope, they had the baby. Well, no, <laughs> I don't care if they're smoking pot or not. I mean, I'm just name, name the geographical point. Who else was there so we can all talk? You know what? And I got dollars to donuts. There was no social event that the three of them no. went to. That and Yeah, you, you say the same thing. There's no way. No, I tried to interview Neil Abercrombie. I wrote him a very polite letter, and I should probably repost it on my blogs, which I'll send it out today. Uh, your actually your questions are prompting me to re, re, reproduce the, the Abercrombie letter as part of today's uh, feed. Cool. Um, I was very polite, as you'll see, and I said, "Look, we may disagree politically, but I'm looking for the facts and the truth. You're the last of the Mohegans. You knew these people. Would you please consent to talk to me?" He blew me off. Oh yeah, but, but he blows... see, he's only interested in talking to the Hawaiians out there, or the Tribune, or the New York Times, or yeah. the I mean, liberal but, news media, of course. So he doesn't talk to people that want the facts. Mm -hmm. He wants to talk to people that are media parrots for the left wing mm -hmm. uh, or catechism. Just, or just believe that if you jack at someone a birther, it's like call him an, a, a, a crazy racist Nazi, fill in the blank. So having said all those things, and I, I when I when when you and I spoke privately, I said I would like to know. By the way, if you're just joining us, this is Andy Martin. Andy is running for for president, in fact, and like I in said, the Republican primary. Yeah, you and I in a snowball, right? But but because it's going to. Well, I don't think so. No, I, I hope my, you're. My I, view I, is, look, here's a guy who's running whose name is Polenti. He wants to run. Yeah. I think maybe they're going to think he's Italian. You see, and they're going to think it's actually Polenta. <laughs> they're going to say, "Oh, he's the Italian guy, but the Governor Polenta." <laughs> so, Plent and the Polenta. Why, why can't I be on the same platform I, with Governor Polenta? I'd love to see it, but that, like I'm saying, I'm but. I, I'd you see my point? I, but there's, uh, totally. Here, but here's my question. I've listened yeah. to all the different takes, if you would, the different versions that you would, sure. because, as I said, it's Roswell. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no truth. The truth yep. is out there, right? Yep. What do you, what do you think the true story of the first, first of all, what do you think the Barack Obama true story is? My honest belief is based on all of the very strong circumstantial evidence and, and the pictures of Barack Obama. He looks like he's Frank Marshall Davis's son. They're they so said. Tall, alike. Yeah. They look like really it's the same picture. I mean, they're, they're that close. Yeah, I've heard that story. Uh, I think Frank was playing around with Ann Dunham. And Frank was married to a very fabulously wealthy uh, white woman from the North Shore of Chicago. And he had left Chicago because of heat for labor racketeering and communist sympathizing. And he moved to the territory of Hawaii with his, again, fabulously wealthy wife. She was a multi, multi, multi millionaires. Now, Frank liked to go to Manoa, which is where the campus uh, up in the highlands there of Honolulu, and play around with the girls. And he was a very interesting, fascinating guy. I mean, as a historical figure, he's just really an interesting guy. And, you know, he would, you know, hit, hit on the girls. And, you know, I guess Mama Down didn't mind it as long as he wasn't getting the girls pregnant. So at some point, Ann went to Frank and said, I'm pregnant. And Frank said, uh, no problem, kid. I got a guy d downtown that'll take care of it. And she said, I want to have the baby. And that was where Barack Obama came in as the proxy father. And that's why he never really treated this young child as his child. Because it was Frank's baby. He knew it. And that also explains why. Is that the poem? The people that have dissected the poem? Uh, well, it's more like it's more like why would your grandfather be taking you to see a guy who was a racist and a hater, mm -hmm. unless Grandpa Dunham knew that this was really your father, and he couldn't tell you that because there was a, an oath of secrecy no, well, that's, there. That's 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 really interesting. You see, I mean, would your grandfather? I don't know if you liked your grandpa or not, or what you called him. Mm -hmm. Would he take you to see a guy? No. Uh, who is going to teach you hate and tell you it's all bad, no. and it's all evil, and whites want to, you know, all this stuff that okay. he took him there because grandfather knew that this was the, there here's, was a conspiracy of silence. Here's, here's no question. I have in dreams from my father, Barack Obama says, you know, he's two and his dad leaves for Harvard and, you know, and it's all, it's all and another family and more children. Yeah. But here's a better question. Yeah. And no, I'm just here. So he says that, that, um, Gramps, as he called, uh, Stan. Yeah. Here's a guy that knocks up your daughter, doesn't marry her. She leaves the rock, never gives her a dime in support. That's the truth. That is the absolute total truth. In the book, it says he took 
that Stan took Senior to the airport, wished him good luck, and hugged him goodbye. Now, what father would take the guy who knocked up his daughter, doesn't marry her, never gives her a nickel, she flees back to the mainland because of all of this, would take the man to the airport and hug him goodbye and wish him good luck? It doesn't make sense, no, does it? No, it does. Well, of course, it's not true. They thanked him because he stood up for Frank. That was that was the that could the, be the devil's bargain that was made. Frank couldn't acknowledge that this was his child. And what's interesting is that that's the one theory that I propounded. And I want to say again, it's not a statement. It's of fact. No, it's, it's no, it's theory. interesting. I right, listen. I'm getting this heads up for traffic. Uh, hang on, if you could, please, sir. I will. Hey, I'll fascinating be here. guy, Andy Martin, six thirty K W twenty nine after the hour. One of those mornings. It's a. 7.33, 27 minutes before the hour of 8 o'clock, Radio Free Denver, 6.30 KHOW, and the International Sportsman's Ex- Expo is uh, January 6th through the 9th at the Colorado Convention Center. You can purchase tickets from KHOW.com, and while you're checking it out, the ISE has given us some amazing Orvis fly rods to give away. Register for those on uh, KHOW, www.khw.com, and also giving away pairs of tickets and doing it right now. So is it be caller 10 at 303 303- 631-2630, 303-631-2630. The 10th caller, the sheet counts them down. We'll get a pair of tickets to go ahead and go have a good time. As I helped to get two judges removed for taking bank stock bribes in Illinois. Okay. And uh, they said, look, we can't trust you to be one of us because you're too damn honest and too sanctimonious. Were, were, did, were you sanctioned? I mean, I, I, I read your bio last night. Were yeah. You, you were sanctioned? I wasn't sanctioned. Oh, okay. Uh, they they just uh, investigated the hell out of me. Wanted to know what my sex life was like, and then said, "We don't we don't want you to practice law with us." And I said, "Thank you very much. Uh, who would want to be part of this den of thieves if you have any self respect?" They, they really went after your sex life. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They wanted to know who my sources were in Vietnam when I was writing things in Vietnam. Uh, you have no idea how corrupt the Illinois Supreme Court was. Well, you see, as a law student, I was asked by a couple of reporters at the Chicago Daily News to help them deal with this bank stock scandal. It was the Otto Kerner case. He went to I'm federal not sure, prison. Of course, of course. And and I was the law student researcher who used to try to make sense of all the gibberish that was being put out by Sherman Skolnick, who was kind of a, That's another name. a radical um, the Chicago corruption fighter. And, uh, and, and, you know, I was warned before I picked up my diploma, they're going after you when you get your diploma. And so I knew what, I knew what fate lay in store for me when I was still a law student. And I embraced it willingly because I thought that, you know, self-respect and integrity were more important than money. And I still believe that. I mean, I don't, don't argue against that. Um, so we, there's a, um, and from time to time, the story, the pictures actually raise their ugly head. There's a lot of nude photos of uh, Stan Lee Ann Dunham, and I rarely bring this up because it's pretty nasty stuff, but they're on the Internet, and you can see them. I've looked at them. You've looked at them. First of all, there's, there are a bunch of people say that they're, that they're um, fixed pictures. In other words, they don't exist. Other people say they're absolutely true, and the, all the surrounding things around them and, the, and the, you know, the shoes and the rest of the stuff really fit the time period. First of all, do you believe that those photos are real? Number two, who, who took them if they're real? Or do you think I, I don't have any idea if they're real. Okay. I I vaguely remember them uh, from two years ago, mm-hmm. um, and there was a lot of talk, and, and that was originally what piqued my interest. Uh, talk about Frank Marshall Davis right. having had uh, because he was into this the sex book. Right, he right. was into this yeah, kind of stuff, yeah. Yeah. and um, you know, I mean, eighteen-year-old girls are ditzy. They'll basically believe anything and she do probably, anything. She was probably seventeen. Um, don't know. I, well, mm-hmm. she graduated from high school. I, right. I don't. I, I don't know his mother's birth date. I'll be frank to say. Um, okay. But the, the point is, um, for me, it, it sort of went in a, in a direction that I thought was a little on the salacious side. Yeah, I do too. And, and so um, you see, the, but the bigamy I've never been hesitant to address because he was legally married in Kenya to a Kenyan woman. But he never married and, her. Marry who? Married uh, Barack Senior never married Stanley Ann Dunham. Um, There's no evidence. Well, we, we haven't found the evidence of that, but this, she got a divorce, so I'm not sure what yeah, the that, significance but, of that but was. But remember, but, he doesn't even respond to the divorce. I mean, she files a I divorce. He, he, that's like saying. It's granted you, by default. Yeah, light my cigarette for me. Exactly. So. Yeah, well, you know, I have a divorce from you. I, I sued you, and, and yeah, I got a divorce. Yeah, of course. That's, that's my never, point. Uh, I mean, you never no, answered. Right. There's no. <laughs> exactly. He, he says, Why? I've never married you. Why would I respond to this? And so uh, the bottom line is 
Um, there was no legal marriage there, and the exactly. liberals have tried to ignore that by pretending that the, well, the marriage in Kenya was illegal. But under British law and under United States law, that was a completely legal and valid wedding and, and marriage oh, sure. in Kenya. And, and, of course, he marries again. I mean, mm -hmm. he, the man had contempt for America and, and for the legal system. He marries again in, yeah, in, uh, Massachusetts. in Cambridge yeah. and has another family. Right. So this guy's got three families running around, if you believe that. And then he goes back and starts another one when he returns to Kenya, correct? Yeah. I, I don't know that he, he went. He certainly went back to Kezia. He never uh, divorced Kezia Obama. And, 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 you know, Obama uses his uh, African relatives as sort of like photo ops. Yeah. But he's never told them, gee, your mama was never legally married mm -hmm. uh, to your I father, mean, let, and I'm the legal kid, has yeah. he? How many... Um, what, would, what would they do in Kenya if he went to Kenya and said that was a, 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 an illegal marriage? They'd, if they'd he said him, it, yeah. Be, uh, they'd give him a little bit many, of Kenyan justice. How many brothers and sisters do you think he has, does the president have? You know, I've never counted them. He's got half a dozen or something like okay. that. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, they... Um, they also gloss over the reality that you can't have three legal marriages at the same time or two legal marriages at and, the same and, time. And, and dreams from my father, when he's, when he, and actually when he addresses the school children of America. By the way, if you're just joining us, Andy Martin uh, is our guest. He says he can run for president, driving the agenda in the Republican Party about the issue of the president of the United States. He, when when he addresses the school children, he said, I know what it's like not to have a father, not to grow up with a father. I was two years old when my father left. That's simply not true. Well, that's right. Uh, he, well, he's talking about when Obama left Hawaii. See, right. the whole timeline here was um, rigged uh, to cover up what really happened. Of course, there's the evidence that Ann Dunham left a few weeks after he was born and headed for the University of uh, Washington in Seattle. So... You know, he's never really addressed any of that, and he's never opened the files. But look, let's let's move on just a little bit. He's never told us who paid the bills when he went to the expensive private college at Occidental. He's never told us who paid the freight at Punahou School, the elite expensive school in Honolulu, where he went to high school and, and, and uh, you know junior high. He's never told us who paid the bills at Columbia University or, or what he told admissions people. And I think there's some real, you know, smoking guns hidden in those uh, college So files. who do you believe? I mean, if and, and it's always why, you know, when you look at all the suppressed bona fides, the, the footprints, the guy's 50 years of age and there's no, he has no documents of his life available to anyone. And Punahou School, I, there's a school here called Grayland Country Day. It's a, an elite school. Punahou's yeah. like Grayland. It's like Grayland Country Day. I'm sure where you are, there's that exclusive, you know, rich kid school. For every town has them. Yeah. They, every, every town has a school, private schools for the children of the wealthy yeah. and the elite. So the old man's working what in a grocery store and 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 uh, Toots working in a bank. The guy, as I, as I always tell people, not a grocery a banker, store, furniture store, furniture store. Yeah, fifty years ago was a low paid occupation. They didn't have derivatives then, and mm -hmm. uh, all these yeah, uh, but, mumbo jumbo deals. You you wore a white collar. The original white collar job was working in a bank. Uh, and clean clothes and low pay. Yeah. And so these people did not have no. thousands of dollars to pay private tuitions for their... Uh, I don't know why they thought he wasn't capable of going to the public schools in Honolulu. But here's my Somebody question. Somebody paid. Thank now, you. Let me ask you let me, a no, question. Let me, let me say Here's it. the money. Follow the money. Let Isn't that what they say? Uh, hang Who on, sir. The money? Let me bring you back. You're, you're worth the price of admission. Our, uh, 6.30 KHW traffic time. Here's Susan. 746, 14 before the hour, I asked Andy Martin, I said, can you stay? He said, I'll stay as long as you're on the air. He'll stay next hour. This guy's great. New Year's Eve. Happy New Year, everybody. 11, the high today, 6 below tonight. And you don't need me to tell you how to drive, but you know it's out there. You ever stop to think about the most important and most used piece of furniture in the family unit? Well, it's your mattress, and we somehow don't mind buying a new TV, a cell phone, or an easy chair. And a mattress should last forever. You spend a third of your life in the rack, and... Why don't you make sure you're getting the best night's sleep, best quality ever. Intermax in Denver, I-25 and I-70. So east or westbound, I mean, on I-70, over or under I-25, on the northwest corner, there's a big blue and white warehouse. In fact, you can see it westbound on 70. It says Intermax, 530 West Elk Place. In Fort Collins, I-25 in Mulberry, they've been improving the way you sleep since 75. So don't shortchange yourself in your quality of life. Get a great night's sleep and make the most of tomorrow. Feel better each day. Friendly, organic, latex, eco-friendly memory cell, scientific digital air sleep, healthy sponge flotation technology, and so much more. 
Better Directions, 1-800-NMAX, but those are good ones. They're open, and they're going to be ready to go. Do yourself a favor. New Year's resolution, sleep better, NMAX. On the line with us, this guy's a home run, Andy Martin. And um, we're talking on the air and off the air, and I'm, you know, I thought that I had... Um, I, th I thought I had a pretty good handle on this story, and um, man, you're just making some tremendous inroads and ideas here. That because well, they're, 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 they're worried about me in both parties. Oh, you sure. see, because the Wall Street money men don't want Obama really removed. He's been quite useful to them, and he mm -hmm. be because he's weak now, and uh, uh, and he's been neutered by the Republican Congress. Obama is the perfect stooge for Wall Street. So uh, yeah, this is not a case where the Republicans are going to be going after no, Obama. No, I, I don't argue with that. Yeah. I also, but I thought George Bush was a stooge for the boys as well. So, well, he had he had Paulson in there as Treasury Secretary, sure. and nobody did more damage uh, to our economy. All right. So let's come back to this. And so, you're making the case on Punahou, and then I I was talking to you, which is this is the the link, is the birth certificate itself. And I know I mean, the first giveaway is African is not a race. I mean, when you look at what's being thrown out there by the anti-birthers or by guys like Chris Matthews or other people. I don't know when they put father's race African, and as we've talked about it a thousand times, that's like saying my race is North American. There are there's there's Saharan Africans, Sub-Saharan Africans, and then it breaks down from there. So, what do you think's on that piece of paper, that long form document that nobody can get their hands? Well, on? again, I, I have to preface this with underlying. I, I understand bold. all that. I understand it, all that. It, it's an opinion. It's yeah, not a statement I, of fact. That's, that's, and I, I more than understand that. Uh, first of all. It may there is a place for the religion of the father. Yeah, I think it's very possible they put Muslim or Islam. All right. Number two, um, there is a place obviously where a doctor signs and where the place of birth is listed. Right. My personal opinion is that no doctor attended his birth. Interesting. Interesting. And that he was born at home. They didn't have money, so where did the okay. money come from to pay for hospitals um, in the all of the, all of the expenses of having a kid. I, my belief is, Interesting. <clears throat> oh, uh, he may his mother may have gone to a clinic where they looked. You know, they had this mm -hmm. prenatal care mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and they said we're going to send a midwife out to do something. And she it didn't look like a complicated girl, birth. Eighteen year old girls are baby machines. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> they sent a midwife over, Interesting. and and he was born at home, uh, and, and there was no complications to the birth. So that's as far as it went. So that's when the, you can phone it in, and that's why the Honolulu Examiner and the Star Bulletin have those dated. Um, exactly. <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't see a conspiracy there. No, I don't either. Right? do yeah, yeah. Uh, because my understanding is that they were pulling that information off, um, uh, uh, you know, health department databases. Uh, sure. But but uh, you see, the reason he doesn't want it to be known that he wasn't born in the hospital and that there was no doctor present. It's twofold. One, he's lied about it. Both he and his sister mm -hmm. have said he was born at Kapiolani Medical right. Center, and he's, they've said he was born at uh, Queens Hospital. They've yeah, actually the, had yeah, two they switched hospitals. hospitals. That's right. It's the second, second of all, yeah. of course, can you imagine <clears throat> the blowback from the birthers? <laughs> oh, my. Although not necessarily from me, that it was all a ruse and that he was born in Kenya. Now, I have to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't think he was born in Kenya. Neither do I. And I have not seen a single piece of evidence that I would stand up in front of a judge and say, Your Honor, I'd like to offer this as Exhibit I, 1. I, you're wonderful. Case. I totally agree. I do not believe he was um, born in Kenya. And, and I debunked that when it was presented by what I call a crackerjack box attorney. Um, you're talking about Berg? No. Who are you talking about? Orly. Oh, Orly Tate. Okay. Fair enough. That's, that's a good example as well. Very good. You and I are... Running down the track here together. It's uh, interesting. So I, um, you know, uh, my belief is that uh, that no, uh, they may not even list that they were married. You know, she may have been angry at the, by the time oh. they were, uh, by the time this whole thing got. Uh, you know, people lovers' quarrels are not happy. And you know, if Frank was going home to Mama at night and Barack was out carousing with now Governor Neil Abercrombie. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can imagine that an 18-year-old pregnant girl might have felt a little lonely occasionally and a little frustrated and a little postpartum depression or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure there was a rocky period there where she was a little angry that that the, the, they'd made a pact that was, you know, good, but it wasn't really right. If if what you say, your belief, and like I said, that's I come back hackney now at this point. It's Roswell. No one knows, so anybody can say what they want to say because there's no documents one way or the other. 
So, like I said, you can live almost 50 years and leave no footprints. It's fascinating that by itself. But your suggestion is who bankrolls her to go to, back to Seattle? Because, like you mentioned, a, a Toot is working as a bank clerk and Gramps is helping manage a furniture store. These guys are not, this isn't uh, the Rockefellers. No, and, 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 and there's got to be a little anger that, uh, at this whole thing because, it, you know, it's, it's flaky. I mean, let's face it. I mean, uh, uh, she's their daughter. and Not many people would want, you know, in the, in the 60s, <laughs> where I went at the University mm-hmm. of Illinois, there were all kinds of distraught parents, wealthy parents from Chicago and the North Shore, that their daughters would come down to Champaign-Urbana, mm-hmm. start hanging around with the wrong crowd, smoking dope, drinking mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in the but she's she's an eighteen industry. she's an eighteen year old kid with a three week old infant, and she's going back home to Seattle. And she goes to Seattle. Right. Where's the money coming from? Thank you. And I, I mean, let's go back to Punahou because maybe maybe mom and dad did buy her an airplane ticket and said go to Seattle. Well, why would she want to go? Um, probably homesick. For what? I mean, mom and dad are there. Her quote, the, the baby's father's there. Eighteen-year-old girls She's 18 have girlfriends. They don't want to be around their parents. Come on. But the person that Jerry Corsi, Jerry Corsi finds the babysitter. They find these people in Seattle, yeah. um, and she enrolls in the first, initially in the night classes at, at, at University of Washington. Well, I believe the the Chicago Tribune had a fairly uh, extensive story on this, as I remember that. I mean, I haven't okay. looked at all this this morning, but uh, there's no question. Um, that she and Barack Obama separate literally within weeks after the baby's birth. Oh, yeah, she's gone. And and, and she always has access to money. Yeah. And uh, he, she comes back, uh, she sends the kid back to Hawaii for schooling at the age of 10. Yeah, but that's just after she marries Lolo and they go off to yeah, Jakarta. But, but but here's the point. He comes back to Honolulu and all of a sudden there's thousands of dollars to send him yeah, to private school. Yeah, exactly. Who had the money? Where, who Show me the money. Frank Marshall Davis. And I think, wow. you know, I mean, there's a certain kind of, uh, you know, I don't know what you call it, dance of the spiders here, because yeah. I probably have come closer than anybody to deciphering the Obama mystery, and yet I'm not a hateful person. You haven't heard me uh, oh. uh, say anything hateful about the guy. I'm, I'm interested in it as, a, as, a, as historical truth. This is a, I mean, I tell people, they ask me why I'm so enamored with this. I guess it is, it is the... I mean, we went through the Ramsey murder, and that, that was no who done it. I mean, that was very, yeah, that, of course. But this is to me, this is the riddle. Well, it makes uh, you know, out in Hawaii when I'm there, I'm, I'm like a, it's like a, a second home to me. They call me McGarrett Hawaii Five O. That's great uh, because you know I'm just the, the cold steel. I'm not the new Hawaii Five O. These guys, I call them acrobats with pistols. Oh, yeah, book them. They're always jumping up and down yeah. and shooting every thirty yeah. seconds. That's good. Yeah, me and you and Chinho, right? Yeah, McGarrett, the old McGarrett. Yeah. You know, the white tie, yeah. a shirt and the tie and the yeah. suit, and then and let's uh, let's let's get the job done. You and I, him, uh, him and Chinho Kelly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, you know. I'm not a hateful guy. I never oh, no, have been. No, no, no. But no. I'm fascinated I by it, and I'm also fascinated by it as a guy who's been in the media for 40 years, huh? because this guy was dumped on the American people by the media. Huh? The Republican Party did nothing to stop it. Yeah. John McCain was, as I say, poor old Grandpa McCain, who was all befuddled and confused, mm-hmm. had no business being the presidential candidate. Mm-hmm. And now we're paying the price of our own stupidity. So when... That's I'm, why I'm running. No, no, by no. The no way. Listen, I think, I, 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 like I said, you are as advertised, and this is not your last appearance on this show. What I am, I'm fascinated by a couple of different things. And first of all, now you got guys, got guys, got guys like Chris Matthews saying, "Well, show that long form, show that vault copy." And then you have this goofy Hawaiian governor who initially says he's going to torpedo the birthers. The family appears in Hawaii, and now his priority is the economy. We're going to not talk about the the issue of the birthers anymore. That's now dropped off. Yeah. Where, you know, that's, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that takes like, you know, Joseph Heller, the guy get catch 22 wrote another book called something happened. And right. I, and I've loved that as a title, something happened. And there's, it's, by the way, can I, can I draw your listeners to our, uh, oh, we I'll tell you, what, website. Oh, are you kidding me? Well, we'll here's what we'll do. Yeah. We will link from ours to you. And that way they can continually read you and see you without chasing the, it. The reason I say that we did a movie in Hawaii on Obama's Hawaii years. And uh, when one of my friends looked at it, uh, it it's in segments because, you know, we had to okay. make it of YouTubeable as well. All right. He said, gee, he said, you, you read the introduction to that movie and you don't even get the impression that you're an opponent of Obama's. Oh, no. And I Listen. said, when I'm writing, 
historical stuff. I'm not an opponent. Mm-hmm. I want the facts. As, as a politician, yes, I fight him on Goldman Sachs. I fight him on foreign policy. Mm-hmm. When I speak as a politician, I put my political hat on, and it says Andy for, for office. Mm-hmm. But when I speak as a writer, I, I'm looking for the truth, because I don't want somebody 50 years from now mm-hmm. to say, well, that Andy Martin was a real douchebag. Mm-hmm. He lied through his teeth. He mm-hmm. knew what he was saying was untrue. Mm-hmm. He published all this garbage, and it, you know, it, it, it's despicable. I, I want them to say, "My God, he was like a—he was like that indefatigable investigator, that policeman that says we have to get to the bottom." Yeah, you of have it. to. I mean, there was but, a great movie of the '60s that was made, Z. I don't know if you ever saw absolutely, it. Absolutely, many times. And, and of course, I'm like the magistrate in Z. I'm asking the questions, nom pronom. You know, that's right. No, it's and, and, and I am like that as well. I mean, I'm, I'm like you know you all the accusations in the world, but the, the the ratings are you know people are fascinated by this and. Even if you look at such hard-hitting conservative journals as Vanity Fair, and they do these polls, and people are going, no, I don't believe any of these stories anymore. Well, uh, the problem is, here, here's people's problem. They, they look to Fox News, here, which here, many here, topics here, here, is conservative. And, and here's my music. Let me put you on hold. We're going to take a quick turnaround and come back with you. You're fascinating. Andy Martin, and by the way, uh, Sheik, would you get his information, his website information? We'll link it right now. Hang on right back after the news. Abercrombie goes after the birthers. Good evening, I'm Kiahi Tucker. The governor says the conspiracy theory that President Obama wasn't born in Hawaii has got to end. It is, we are, and good morning, two minutes after the hour. It's Friday morning, the final final day, actually the final day of the decade, 2010, 2011, tomorrow. You heard the weather. Well, what more do you need? Take your time. Stay warm. 6.30 KHOW. That's, of course, the uh, Hawaii, that's a Hawaiian newscast. You can see that on our website, KHOW.com. And now we have linked from KHOW.com to all the information of Andy Martin, who's on the line with us. But, again, what's fascinating is this governor, uh, Abercrombie and Snitch, has said, well, I'm going to torpedo these birthers. I'm going to set the record straight. I am going to, I was a parent, I was a friend of them, and I knew this little boy, and I knew the parents, and we socialized, and I'm troubled by this. And then he becomes the governor, and he's been governor since the 6th of December, and now the comments are, well, we're not going to do this right away. This is, uh, this is the economy. The problem's now the economy. But he remembered seeing Barack Obama as a child with his parents at social events. The BS flag gets thrown. This guy's wonderful, Andy Martin. And um, this, by the way, will not be the last time that you hear Mr. Martin. He's thrown a couple really good curveballs at, at, uh, the, at, at the mystery of the life and times of Barack Obama. And uh, you're as good as they come. The, also the Republican Party that yeah. forfeited the White House oh. two years ago because they were unwilling to take on Obama and ask mm-hmm. these questions. Yeah. No, I mean, they're... Uh, <laughs> And don't take this the wrong way. No, please. Way. I, I, have, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have less use for the Republican Party than I do the Democrats. Yeah. Don't take this the wrong way. Uh, I'm a very reluctant candidate. I'm not looking forward to traveling around the country and being attacked by the left wing. That's attack okay. Puppies. No. Hey. But I'm committed to the truth. I'm going to run as a Republican. I'm going to be in the presidential primaries, and voters are going to have a, a chance to vote whether they really believe Obama's fairy tales about who he is or whether they want the truth and the whole truth to be investigated and put before the public. So we have discussed, you know, and I think your take on, uh, and it was a, 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 an interesting and I think changing my mind on a couple of different uh, parts of this is who funds this young woman to take this baby and go back to uh, where she lived as a child and grew up and go to night school and pay tuition. There isn't much evidence of her working anywhere. And then she enrolls in day classes and pays the rent. And everyone's seen the rent, or people who are interested have seen the rent receipts and met the babysitters or spoken with the babysitters. And then after senior goes to uh, back to goes to Harvard, goes to Cambridge, and of course that and part of dreams from my father how Stanley Ann drives him to the airport and hugs him goodbye and wishes him good luck and it just apply practical logic. Here's a guy that knocks up your 17, 18-year-old daughter, never marries her, never sends her a nickel in support, either child support or uh, this gives her any, any alimony, uh, literally abandons her. She leaves the island, goes to Seattle, lives by herself, stays away from the family for over two years, and then your, your, your granddad's going to take that guy to the airport and hug him goodbye. It, it, it doesn't add up, but then he's off to Cambridge, and we know the rest. So she returns to Hawaii. 
and she meets this guy, Lolo Sotero. Pick up the story and your thoughts about that. Well, Lolo Sotero is has been a source of great, uh, prolific speculation for a number of reasons. First of all, he does marry Ann Dunham, and um, he's from Indonesia, and uh, they do go to Indonesia, and Barry does go there. There's no question as a historical fact that he went there. And the records are there. The records are there, and we do have the first thing that sort of sets people at Twitter is that they put him in school, and uh, they register him at, I, I believe it's a Catholic school, and there's uh, the Fred, AP Fred, has come up with a story that yep. says he registers as, as, as Islamic. Well, that's the Franciscus yeah. Assisi, which is Francis yeah. of Assisi. I think what people have to do, and this is a very difficult thing for us, human nature, we cannot look at life 50 years ago through the prism of life today. Today, if you're a dad or a mom, you can't even travel with your kid unless you either have uh, the other parent there or you've got a permission slip. Indeed. In the old days, people did all sorts of things, um, and, and nobody thought the worse of it. We weren't obsessed with molesters and kidnappers and identity thieves. So I don't find it at all strange that Lolo takes this kid, Barack, mm-hmm. Uh, to the school and says, yeah, he's my kid, and uh, yeah, register right. him as a Muslim. I've tried to uh, make that case. If my mother uh, married a guy and we went to Cleveland when I was a kid and enrolled me in a shul and said I was a Jewish kid, and I'm a, what say so do I have? Well, more than that, it, it's not at all unusual. Now, today it would be unusual because, you know, there'd be uh, the, the, the real father, whoever it would be, would be in custody court saying you, you, you can't make him a Jew and you can't right. do this or exactly. you can't make him a Christian. There's all kinds of no, litigation agree. like that. Fifty years ago, who knew? There was no mm-hmm. communication. We, we, we think of the Internet and we think mm-hmm. of cable TV. Fifty years ago, people got their news from and, a newspaper. And if I understand correctly from, from my reading that you, it was um, in that, in, during that time in Indonesia, you had to be a Muslim. In other words, even even though she and he claimed that she was teaching uh, at the um, American embassy, yes, and he was had been he'd been brought in back into the uh, Indonesian military, but the Francis Franciscus, I think they pronounce it a CC school, Franciscus. Yeah, but it's uh, thank you, but they but they do it in, in Indonesia, but it's the Francis of a CC school. Yes, and so but but Lolo adopts him. Well, I don't think he does adopt them. There's okay. no evidence of that. If right. it's, if it's if, if because, that's the claim that's made, one of the claims that's made is initially they said, "Well, uh, you're right. automatically adopted if your mother marries another well, man." Well, see, that's not true. And in the list of things that's missing is the adoption records. The Saturo adoption yeah. records have never been; they've been deep sixed or not released, or they know exist or whatever it is. But he is enrolled under the under, with Saturo's last name. Yes, and they call him Barry Saturo. Right. right now. Today, that wouldn't happen. But that could it have happened 50 years ago? I think it would have been the norm 50 years ago. I don't think people would have questioned it because, you see, she was, uh, and I can't, I don't speak Bahasa, so I can't tell you what foreigner would be in Bahasa, but she was a foreigner. So he's the local guy, and he says, this kid here, you know, he's he's my son. Uh Uh-huh. And and they say, oh, okay, sure. You know, well, where do we? Uh, what's his name? Oh, it's Barry yeah. Sotero. Put yeah. put my name on it. That'll be easier. And it's all done, um, in my opinion, uh, quite second nature, as if you want to call and it. And he's that. got some, he's got some stroke. I mean, he's in the he's in the oil business, and he's been brought yeah. back in the military, so he's got a little stroke. Exactly. So I don't see any of that retrospectively uh, as being unusual for the 1960s. Fair enough. So what happens is. People get all worked up, and um, uh, they want to. They're so anxious to hate Obama, they're not really interested in the truth. Fair enough. And uh, my view is, the truth is that Sotero is probably a bit player in history because he okay. did not adopt this but, child. And uh, they say, well, he had to change his name and do this and do that. You know, they didn't even have passports for kids very no, often she, in those but, days. But then this other name comes up. A th- yet a third name comes up. On, on that return, and you wonder who's this guy. I, there, and again, but I like what you say because there's never been any adoption records. They've either been suppressed or don't exist. So you don't think he, they just they just gave him the name, gave him the jacket, put him in the school? Exactly. That's exactly what I think happened. Okay. And my parents were divorced. Okay. And nobody ever questioned whether my mother could travel around the world. I traveled okay. around the world too. I mean, in some sense, uh, 
Uh, she went to graduate school at Oxford, England, and I was enrolled in oh, the wow. school there. Nobody questioned uh, when I went to school okay. at Oxford uh, where, where parents were. You were there, and they signed you okay. up. So, and, and by the way, we didn't have this adversarial attitude that we've created in Obama's case, where every single word has to meet some kind of matrix of you know uh, conspiracy. Much of all of this is not conspiracy. Much of it is just goofiness. Yeah, it, it, it was no. it's a goofy eighteen year old girl that gets knocked up by somebody, and then she's sort of sub optimizing as she stumbles through life. She's obviously a bright person. Very bright. She does get a degree, right? But she doesn't have two nickels of common sense. All right. So bring. So do you believe, as some people believe, that his his um, half sister, Maya, has a also has a birth certificate from Hawaii instead because she's born in Jakarta. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't know. I've never really looked into Maya that much, okay. but it wouldn't surprise me if she did. Because as has been pointed out by so many other investigators, Sun Yat-sen had a Hawaiian birth certificate. They wanted to make him a, so they grant, so Hawaii granted him a, a birth certificate for, to Sun Yat-sen, the father of, quote, the father of modern China. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Right. And frankly, I've never looked into Fair it. Enough. So I, the right. reason, uh, um, you know, she, the only place where I get interested in Maya is when I believe she says initially that he was born at Queen's yes, Hospital. Yes, right. She does say that. That's right. Uh, not Capiolani. And that sort of stroked my interest. Beyond that, uh, the, the hardest thing to do with Obama is to follow what we used to call, and I still call, the critical path and not get diverted by all these little that, squirrels you're, that you're, are jumping in the you're, trees. You're, your thinking's great. I like your thinking. I mean, the same thing happened. Uh, you've heard many people say, what passport did he use? He didn't have to have when one. When he went to Pakistan. Oh, now that, I want to bring that up to you. Uh, and, and that's another bunch of nonsense. And, you know, uh, I, I originally, I, I was the, I get first dibs on all these conspiracy theories because even people that, don't agree with me. Always run them by me to get my reaction. I want to listen. I want. Could we jump to? Let me do this because I'm I'm at traffic and we got shoot. a snowstorm in the city. Yep. Um, we'll come back with that because that, that's excellent stuff. Hang on a second. This guy's You're tremendous. Welcome. His name is Ran Andy Martin. Go to khow.com. You can jump from our website straight over to all of his work. So khow.com. It's. Okay, 17 after 8, 8, 17, 11 the high today, 6 below tonight for New Year's Eve, 24 New Year's Day, and 4 degrees tomorrow night. It's Friday morning. I'm Peter Boyle, 630 KHOW. Uh, our guest is just great, Andy Martin, who has done tremendous research into the life and times of Barack Obama. And we were talking about this, uh, the passport and the trip to, uh, to Pakistan. And um, I, I agree with the, this notion that it, it wasn't forbidden to go but it was you were warned not to go. There were places like North Vietnam, North Korea, Cuba. There was a handful of places, uh, maybe maybe Estonia or something. I don't know. They said you can't go there. But you could go to Pakistan. But here's the question: Is that Obama makes a speech in San Francisco where he said that when yes, when he went to Pakistan, but he went. Why did he stop? Why did they first fly to Jakarta, Indonesia? Well, he said, my mother was there, and I went to visit her. But we know that she wasn't there. She had divorced Lolo, and she was back on the rock. And so, uh, well, she did go back to Indonesia later, though. Uh, ab my, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I, again, I, 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 I'm, I'm frank to say, I'm not really up on every little uh, timeline. No, no, you're, that's I, why I, you're wonderful. I mean, I, listen, I'm like you. I'm, you know, I'm feeling around in the dark as well because everything's suppressed. You can't see things. But there are people who have timelined this, and again, it's Roswell. Let's say that. Why did he go there when she wasn't there? He made a speech to say that she was there. So, but I agree with you on the Pakistan thing that, that that you could go to Pakistan. They were warning you not to go, but it didn't mean you could not. Oh, right, uh, exactly. Uh, there were all, there are always all kinds of you can't go to Africa today. They have warnings for various countries. Right. I, right. I don't know what they are, but I mean, um, the, the the claim that he went there on some foreign passport it could exist. But yeah, there's no evidence of Roswell. It. Yeah, exactly. Let me so, you see again. Look, let me let me explain to you the difference. When when you're just want to be out there on the internet firing off crackpot emails, you can say what you want anonymous. Sure. I get these all the time sure. myself. When you move to the next level and you put your name on something, as I do, I I, I have to be comfortable with it. Yeah, me too. Now I've asked people to um, vote for me. You have to go to a higher level yet. The level of confidence they have to have in your judgment in screening this information if they're going to be able to take you seriously has to be but, much 
but higher. Me... That, by the way, that doesn't mean I'm a perfect person and I've led a flawless life. Mm-hmm. Far from it. But on the issues of Obama and politics and foreign policy, I'm as close to a dream candidate as you get because I'm conservative. And that doesn't mean that I'm a right-wing nut. It means that I'm conservative. And conservatism in its classic sense, don't rock the boat unless you know which way it's going to lean. Let me come back to the passport, if I yeah. could, for a moment. What And the many, many things that have been suppressed, no footprints, his passport records have been suppressed. They're not released. And, in fact, the records were scrubbed clean by Obama's terrorism and intelligence advisor. And even when they made that, and I think intentional, show of his passport, they had everything pixeled out. There's only one passport in the world, and each president, you know, Bill Clinton had that passport, W had that passport, and currently this man has that passport. But they pixeled it when they showed it. His passport records have been scrubbed, so and they've also been suppressed. So we don't, again, it's Roswellian. What is your take? Uh, to be honest with you, the, the passport issues have not been issues that I have really focused on. Um, mm. There have been, I mean, some people have said, well, check the manifest of the airplanes mm-hmm. to nah. Kenya in 1961. That's crazy. And I've said, I've said That's crazy. Pan American Airways and Transworld yeah. Airways don't even exist no. anymore. Right. Uh, <clears throat> you see, here's the problem that we have. Let me see if I can give you some focus here. When somebody is running for president, the scope of inquiry is very large. And you can pretty much do anything you want. When they get elected on November 2nd or 4th, whatever day that he was elected, the scope of challenging narrows down to the Electoral College. And I was the one that started the battle at the Electoral College. So I said, I don't think it's going to succeed, but I think it's legally, constitutionally, you know, supportable, justifiable. Once he takes office and actually takes the oath, the presumption of legitimacy, or as they call it in the courts, the presumption of regularity attaches to these actions by the government. And that's why when you see people getting all hyperventilated about we're gonna, the courts are going to mm-hmm. take them out and so mm-hmm. on and so I forth. I don't believe that. It's not going to happen. I agree. There, there's a better chance that you and I are going to elope in Connecticut no. and then go and live happily ever after next to Rachel Maddow and her partner <laughs> in Massachusetts Great. than there is that the Supreme Court or the right. Congress is going to but, remove Obama, it, e- even if he's illegal. Yeah, but it's going to take, you know, somebody, you know, with more stroke than I'll ever have on my best day. But all I have is questions. I don't have answers. I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, that's but, what I'm fighting for. What I'm saying to Republicans is 100 million of us have these doubts. Mm-hmm. Why don't we have an inquiry? Why don't we well, talk about can, them as adults? So you and I have had an adult conversation. Mm-hmm. You haven't said, oh, you don't agree with me on the passport. Mm-hmm. You're off the air. You're no, not. No, of course you're, not. You're, you're covering up something. Mm-hmm. We're having an inquiry and we're saying there's, you know. Well, no one knows. May I quote Jim Morrison? Sure. There are things that are known. <laughs> That's the things that are unknown. unknown. That's right. And between them, there are doors. That's right. We're only interested in opening the doors. And and my candidacy is an attempt to open the door so that 100 million Americans will have the chance to come into the Republican Party and say, look, political establishment, we agree with Andy Martin that you're not doing the job. Go after Obama aggressively. Make him defend what he's done. Make him tell the truth about who he is. Make him authorize the release of his college records and his bogus birth certificate that everybody's talking about, the long firm. Put Obama under pressure. That's all. I, I, I no, have a judged of it, you know? No, let's come back. So he, he returns from Indonesia, and he enrolls in the schools you pointed out. The Panahu school. Panahu school. But that application is suppressed. The whole Panahu school record is hidden. And, and it, I was going to say, the, then he, the Neolani third grade records have been suppressed. Now there's this picture that shows up of him and this kid, and the mother takes the picture and uh, it writes, you know, Barry and the, whatever the kid's name was. And, and it doesn't jive with the official story. And people go, no, no, wait a minute. So here's Panahu and Neolani. Now, wait a minute. This is a, uh, a picture taken when he was at Panahu. Now he's 10 years old. Or... Yeah, that's the one where he's got his arm around the kid. The kid's a Hawaiian kid or an, an Asian kid. Have you ever seen that picture? Uh, honestly, I, I don't I, remember. I, 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 I very probably that. have, yeah. but I, again, I... I... It, but it doesn't jive with the what people call the nativity story. And I'm thinking to myself, so why would you suppress Panahu school apps and records? What's your take? Well, I think I see the hand of Frank Marshall Davis. What is it, the voice of Jacob but the hands of Esau, or is oh, it the yeah. voice of Esau yeah. and the hands sure. of Jacob? Yeah. You see, there has to be a source of money here somewhere. And I can just see Toots, who's a very businesslike, very buttoned-down Midwestern woman, 
saying to, to, to her husband, uh, Stanley, let the son of a bitch pay. Yep. You know, he got us in this jam. Yep. And so they go to Frank, and they say, Frank, we need tuition for, for Mary to go to the Punahou School. And he says, okay, no problem. I'll, I'll have the cash in your hands, whatever. And by the way, they didn't have all these requirements for bank secrecy then either. You could move money around 40 years ago quite easily without anybody knowing about it. And, of course, she worked at a bank. Well, sure. So, uh, you see, there's, there's just too much no, money like, here yeah. All right, in so, the Obama pipeline with no explanation. All right, so off he goes to L.A. to Occidental. Well, uh, that, there's where I think there's another smoking gun. In my opinion, he probably sought affirmative action, or he may have even said he was a Muslim, or he may have played the Kenyan card. I absolutely agree. My father's from Kenya. I hope to get an education mm-hmm. and go back to Kenya and bring uh, or, public water supplies to the Luau people. Mm-hmm. He played. He played the the Africa card. No, he got. Yeah, he knew how to do it. I mean, there's a. Oh, point. he's true. This guy well, is a it, it, manipulator. Me, crazy question. If this Frank Marshall Davis thing is true, when has he ever told the truth? And is this about the, because is this? There are people that talk about his anger at his um, grandmother. And I talk about that. That's maybe where I read it. Maybe I'm reading you through yeah. some, I don't know. I, I read so much it. of this stuff. Yeah. Does that... Does that does I think it, he was angry at both his mother and his grandmother, and that's why there's a, this, this tension in how he deals with them. On the one hand, he deeply loves them. He loves them intensely, you know. They were the two rocks in his life. Sure. On the other hand, he's angry because he has this feeling they betrayed him. They didn't tell him Frank was his daddy until Frank was dead. And imagine how you would feel if you found out that somebody mm-hmm. who had been your neighbor, Mr. Smith, was actually your father and your, your mother had well, John, had a little... That's John Lennon. I mean, he, that, yeah. he thinks it's I a mean, sister. I mean, we actually, you, you yeah. use the term nativity story, right. but we have sort of that where Joseph is told, you know, your wife is pregnant right. by God, and, right. uh, you know... No, uh, no absolutely. If, if, if somebody came along and said to you, uh, you know, Paul, your wife is pregnant by God, but go ahead and marry her, you'd be heading for Macon County line. Oh, yeah. No, I, I there's, you know, there's been this sort of, you know psycho history done by obviously it's by a lot of your work as well because I, I, yeah work. and, and I, it, I did the yeah. psychological profile yeah. of obama and i tried to connect the fact that he was emotionally abused as a child with the sort of defensive personality this very pliable personality that mm-hmm. developed as an adult when he when he, and i i believe this is why i mean up until a certain point of his life he's not responsible then he comes with what attorneys call what your majority you're over the age you're not a, you're not right. a minor anymore Right. So when he's off to see the wizard at Occidental, and he's not a he's not a bright student. He's I mean he's a bright guy. He doesn't get great grades. People re- what remember him driving a really nice car, wearing puka shells, smoking dope. That's what all of those people say. And then two years into a Occidental college, which is really kind of a good time par- party school, he's finally he it gets accepted to Columbia, which is I've been told, and I I couldn't get in an Ivy League school with my life depended on it. But I was told, hey, it's very very rare if ever. Do you transfer into Columbia from a school like Occidental at the end of your second year? And by the way, that ain't a, that ain't a cheap place either. So let me. I don't think that's accurate. Okay. Uh, again, uh, I'm drawing now on my history as a guy that grew up on a college campus and uh, okay. t- uh, taught as an adjunct professor. Uh, my my understanding is it's not easy, but it is somewhat uh, easier unless... to transfer into an Ivy League school because kids drop out okay, and they but... have a few extra places in the senior classes. So you can transfer okay, in but as a say, junior. But say the the critics at this time, on in the Ivy League schools, all they're looking for is, quote, diversity, 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 diversity. Oh, my God, we've been racist, white, fill in the blanks for all sure. these years. And so here shows up a kid who could claim all kinds of different backgrounds legitimately, and he is embraced with open arms. He's the guy they're really looking for. Yes, exactly. Do you think that, do you think that theory holds up? Oh, I do, absolutely. I, I, I'm absolutely convinced that he played uh, the affirmative action card. But see, I go further. I actually believe he played the Kenya card to oh, get into God. these places. And, you know, I mean, I, I will turn around David Korn's anti-conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Korn says there was, couldn't have been a conspiracy 48 years ago or whatever no. when uh, these ads were placed. I will turn around and say by the time Obama's a college student, well, he knows. he's playing the yeah, game. He he's knows working it. the system. Absolutely. Hang on, sir. Let me do traffic because you are on the money again. Andy Martin is our guest. His work, go to KHOW.com, and you can now link right over and read all of Mr. Martin's work. Traffic on a nasty end of the year. Here's Susan. It's 834. There we go. 26 minutes before the hour, 630 KHOW, Denver's talk station. I'm Peter Boyles. 11 will be the high today, 6 below tonight. Happy New Year, everyone. Our guest is Andy Martin. We have a link. 
from our website, khow.com, my page to Mr. Martin's work, which is just, I mean, he's on and off the air. He's just a tremendous guest. Um, we've gotten to Occidental to Columbia. We're talking about Obama's life, his passport, and we're talking about the suppressed um, bona fides or you know, a paper trail or a f- documentation. And why has this man, maybe this is even a better overall question, Barack Obama has lived almost 50 years without leaving any footprints. Why? Well, I, I think there's been perhaps at some point a conscious, he may have realized, uh, well, when he realized that that his family history wasn't what he wanted it to be, it was too late to change. We, we're saying that if he learned that Frank was his daddy when he was 26 or 27 mm-hmm. years old, he just couldn't say, oh, I'm not really the Lion King from Kenya, and these aren't all my relatives, and it was all a mistake. I'm, I'm Is really... this why he treats them so badly? I think Frank also probably did not want to disrupt his his wife uh, and, and the other children that he had. So it was kind of like a let sleeping dogs lie, I think it's the best expression. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, he, he was working the myth that he's the Kenyan uh, kid and all this and that. It was working for him, so he didn't change it. That explains Columbia and Occidental and the rest of this stuff? Uh, th- that's what I think we're going to find, and I think that's what he really is part of the affirmative action. Oh, yeah, there's there. no question, yeah. Uh, and he's playing the Muslim card. I would be absolutely unsurprised if we find out that he told people at Occidental he was a Muslim. Maybe by the time he gets to Harvard Law School, he doesn't have to play the Muslim card. But at Occidental, I think he probably plays the when, Muslim card. When does he stop being Saturo and goes back to Obama? Uh, at 10 years old, when he comes back to Honolulu to live with his grandparents and register at Punahou. What do you do with this? He doesn't register as Sotero no. uh, at Punahou. But they call him Barry. and, and, yeah, and He's and, Barry until he uh, goes to college, as I understand it. What do we do with the story of the Social Security number comes out of Connecticut? You know... I have seen those stories, and I honestly can't give you an, an intelligent okay. answer. I, right. I don't know. Right. Um, right. As I say, said to you earlier, at some point there is so much of this material mm-hmm. that you have to pair back what you, meaning a, a researcher or a writer, is going to look at. I mean, I am not looking just to throw stuff against the wall. Oh, no, no, I, yeah, but, but, you, uh, but... So I haven't worked on that story. I don't know what the facts of it are. I really don't know just... You know what the truth is, but right. but again, that's part of the, b- being king of the birthers. I don't have an orthodoxy um, <laughs> that I can say right. you believe this or we put you under the guillotine. Basically, what I'm saying is that everybody's sort of thrashing around in this kingdom, mm-hmm. wanting to know the truth, but different levels of fidelity to the truth. And in, in my case, yes, I've heard these stories about the, the, the numerous so, um, Social Security numbers. I've never done research in that area. I haven't pursued them. And, it, you know, if Fair I enough. had an unlimited budget and unlimited time and a mm-hmm. huge research staff, what was maybe it? I would. What was the great line? An infinite number of monkeys with an infinite number of type, typewriters randomly, randomly would write Shakespeare. Yeah, well, that, I suppose that's okay. <laughs> so let me come back. So we have them at Columbia. Right. And none of those records are ever released, no admission records, no financial. By the way, no financial aid records have ever been released. And it's like going to Columbia ain't on the cheap. No, that's a very expensive. Today it's $50,000. How, how did he do that one? How did he do that one, Andy? Well, I, uh, you know, again, he might have got some aid. I don't know. From? But we don't know that for a fact. And uh, I always come back to the Frank Marshall Davis theory. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just like it. I mean, I think that it makes sense. Off to Harvard Law, all of those records have been suppressed. Ah, well, there we do have a footprint or a fingerprint. We have uh, in 2008, I believe it is, um, perhaps 2000, Percy Sutton, who was a very respected person in the civil rights movement in New York City, served as the borough president of um, Manhattan, et cetera, and so forth. Um, he says that he was contacted by a fellow who was a Saudi Arabian spokesman. I've heard the story. Khalid al-Mansur. Right, right. You've seen the video, probably. Right, right. And I have no reason to, to doubt Percy explain, Sutton. By the way, explain to the audience the video and where we can put that up for everyone, too. Uh, the Percy Sutton video? Yes. I don't know where it is. Okay. but the, uh, why, why, I, It's there somewhere. Talk about the video, what's on it, and who this man well, is. Well, the video says that, gee... 
I remember being contacted by Khalid al Mansur, a very distinguished lawyer. Of course, he was distinguished in Percy's eyes, not mine. And he wanted to promote the admission to Harvard of this uh, very uh, bright young man, Barack Obama. And uh, would I please send a letter of support for him to the Harvard Law School Admissions Committee? That's a paraphrase. That's not verbatim. Sure. No. sure. Uh, in any event, uh, you know, Percy Sutton is just an overwhelmingly credible witness. He has no reason to lie. He's, you know, in his last days. And um, I believe every word that he says. So he links Obama to Khalid al-Mansur and the effort to get him into Harvard Law School. And, and he's a very, very, very wealthy sod. Who's that? Khalid. Yes, because he's got, he can tap into the Saudi Arabian money pipeline. He, mm-hmm. he apparently uh, linked up with the Saudis when he was a young man, and um, he has a, a quite an aggressive resume, I guess you'd have to call it. Of, of being pro-Saudi, anti-American, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anti-white, uh, anti-everything, really. Uh, well, that, that was, what, how, how or why would he front this young man? Well, let me tell you something that I think is really going to knock your socks off. Who knew Vernon Jarrett? You've heard the name Valerie Jarrett? Oh, of course. And she's married to, I think it's the son or the grandson of Vernon Jarrett. Well, that's Perkins Coey. That's that co- that's a connection yeah. there, too. Who knew Vernon Jarrett? Who was friends with Vernon Jarrett? Was it Barack? Frank Marshall Frank Davis. Frank Marshall Davis, I'm sorry. Who knew the black Muslims? And, and, and... Percy Sutton. Louis Farrakhan. Defa- no, well, Louis, Louis Farrakhan. Percy no, Sutton no. defended Frank some of Frank Marshall Davis. See, but, Frank Marshall Davis's home was in Chicago. That's where he rose to prominence. But didn't, didn't Percy Sutton defend them a couple of times also? It, maybe he did in New York. Okay. But, uh, the point is, Chicago was Frank Marshall Davis's base of operations. That's where he became famous. Okay. He was a member of the Negro Press, as it was called in those days. Right. He was part of the Civil Rights Movement. He knew all the, the big wheelers. He was only a, a C or D lister himself, but he knew everybody in the Civil Rights Movement. And he had a big wallet, too, didn't he? His wife was a very rich white woman mm-hmm. from the North Shore of Chicago. And, of course, interracial marriages in the 1940s were quite unusual. Forbidden. Um, they're today, uh, well, they weren't forbidden in Illinois. No, but in, they in, were forbidden in some states. Sure. But in Illinois, had a more liberal tradition. Mm-hmm. It always has. Um, Chicago, more liberal still. So, but it's still in, in in the overall scheme of things, it would be quite unusual for somebody from the North Shore to marry somebody from Bronzeville. Mm-hmm. So Frank knew all these people. Now. By the time Obama goes to Chicago, Chicago has a black mayor. To say he's going to organize a town with a black mayor is kind of like saying, uh, you know, you're going to go to New York City to teach them how to make bagels. So then, then this was this was when what's his name Washington was mayor, correct? Yes, exactly. Right. So he's going to go there and save Chicago and the Chicago African Americans when they have a black mayor, black alderman, black this, black mm-hmm. that. Of course not. It's ridiculous. He went there because that's where. Frank Marshall Davis pointed him, and that's where he had this network that still existed. So that explains the why, in in your mind, again, plausible explanation for not releasing any Harvard College Law School records, uh, admission, any of those things. Well, that and, of course, Khalid al-Mansur. I would bet you dollars to donuts that Frank Marshall Davis in some way also knew Khalid al-Mansur. I mean, I don't have a shred of documentary evidence, let me be honest and accurate, to prove it. But you look at this stuff, you know, in the same way that when I was in Honolulu and I was at, drinking a beer at Anna's Banana, which is one of the bars where his uh, alleged father and his actual mother and Neil Abercrombie used to hang around, mm-hmm. these campus bars there in Manoa, mm-hmm. you can almost feel how it unfolded. Wow. They're sitting there having a few beers, and, and you know, Frank is saying, yeah, let's, maybe we can go under the tree and, you know, do a little smooching, and I'll show you what it's really like and all this, and blah, 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 and... You know, out of this comes an accident. and But, see, I don't have a mean-spirited approach. If you no, go and I, watch the movie, yeah. you'll see that I, I mean, this is amazing to me. It's, it, 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 you know, one of the stories that, uh, what's his name, Gibbs says, how, you could tell this script to Hollywood. Let it, me do it, this. Let me, let me do this. I, I, I agree. It's like, I need to do traffic one more time. Hang on. Andy Martin, you go to our website, khow.com, right now. There's a link right to all of Mr. Martin's work. Traffic on a snowy Friday. Here's Susan. It is 8.47, 13 minutes before the hour. You're listening to Andy Martin. Our website is khow.com. My name is Peter Boyles. Go to that, and it's, it'll stay up that way for about 13 minutes, and then it 
goes over to Glenn Beck. Uh, but you can stay with it over the weekend, tell your friends about it. You can read Mr. Martin's work. I think he's an intriguing, fascinating guest. And as I was talking to him a moment ago off the air, I said, you know, I sort of prided myself on knowing this story. I take off my hat. Um, you are as good as they come on this. Um, and again, it's khw.com. Let, let, let me come back to this centerpiece question again. And, and as you and I have spoken about, the original vault copy birth certificate of Barack Obama has not been released. The lawyer's fees are, some people believe, 200,000, I mean, excuse me, 2 million, 2.5. I mean, a birth certificate is $15. This guy spent on just on the birth certificate alone a million bucks fighting court cases to prevent this being required to show the live birth, the true birth certificate. Why? Well, there's absolutely something he's hiding. Now, uh, some people will say, and I'm not in this camp, that he's hiding that something to do with that he was being born in Kenya. And you and I agree about that. I don't believe that I do at all. not believe he was born. See, mm-hmm. uh, see I traveled um, in that era, in the 50s and 60s, by air. And I know what it cost across the Atlantic mm-hmm. in today's money. It would have cost them $20,000. Sure. And I can't imagine... Fly that. from Kenya yeah. to Hawaii. Yeah. I just don't see it I agree. realistic. I agree. But... I do believe that there's information on the long form he wants to hide. My my personal thing, and I think I told you earlier for the, your listeners that are just joining us, one issue that's on the long form is father's religion. It, he probably listed Muslim. Mm-hmm. Uh, there may not be a marriage. Maybe they didn't list the father. That's mm-hmm. a possibility, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe the uh, the daughter got married. See, one of the things that you got to know that's different. Today, if you have a baby, I don't know if you know anybody that's had a kid recently, when the mom is still in the delivery room, you got paperwork coming in. The bean mm-hmm. counters come mm-hmm. in. They want to know all this information. Now you get an in SS the old days, right. a birth certificate wasn't necessarily filled out at the time of birth. So it is possible, uh, and I, I actually believe that Ann Dunham and Barack Obama, if he is the father, and I don't believe he is, but let's assume for mm-hmm. a moment he is, there's no evidence that either one of them had any money or the proverbial pot to do their mm-hmm. business in. And so it's likely that she went to some clinic, and and she got seen, but there was no doctor attending it, and she wasn't admitted to a hospital. I said, oh, you're 18 year old, you're a kid. Mm-hmm. Go home and have your baby. Um, here's the telephone number of the midwife. She'll come over when you start having contractions or when your water breaks, and we'll see you in 30 days or something like that. that that's how they probably handled it. And that's why Obama has he, a fig leaf where he says Kapiolani, mm-hmm. but there's no evidence that he, that, no. that kid was born in Kapiolani. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Kapiolani has a file that says uh, she was tr- seen at our clinic and she was sent home and we had a midwife that attended and there was no problem. That's how, by the way, that's how poor babies were born in the 50s and 60s mm-hmm. and 30s. And yeah. uh, You go back into that era, people were casual about birth. Yeah, there's, what's the great story that... Trial lawyers hadn't been yeah, invented yeah, yet. The there first, was no malpractice yeah. insurance. The first American president to have been born in a hospital, I think, was Jimmy Carter. All, all others were born at home. Did you know that's that? That's right. Uh, that I didn't know. Yeah, but, the, but, but that's that's fully consistent with what I believe, that, that Obama was born at home. But he's afraid to say that because he's already told the lie. And if he came out tomorrow and said, I was born at home and my mother did not have a doctor, she had a, uh, a midwife, well, of course, everybody, the liberals would say, you lied to us, and they'd say, Hillary, Hillary, Hillary. Yeah. And the conservatives would say, see, we I, told you Barry Sotero, Gabaguzi right, was lying. Well, let me, again, these are pondered questions, but right. there are people that I read that say, okay, it all turns out to be the things that you are saying are true, that there would be riots in the streets, there would be problems in this country that are insurmountable, that he is not the, quote, legitimate president of the United States, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I want to tack that on to... What do you think of Colonel Terry Lakin? Well, I wrote a letter uh, to the Army Chief of Staff, and I said, uh, this is like early, early this year, and I said that, that Colonel Lakin had sincere views that were held by many people, and particularly within the military, and that he should not be prosecuted. However, after Lakin was convicted, I wrote another column, and I pointed out that and by the way, I had nothing to do with Lakin's defense. I never gave anybody any advice, so I wasn't an architect of this. Um, I think that uh, Lakin was kind of used by people that had an agenda. But you see, the power of the government, the power of the state, is at, is, is at its greatest. It's at its zenith when you're dealing with the military. The military is not a democracy. 
It is kind of a dictatorship, which is sort of a wild tiger that is run in our country by the civilian authority. But military rules and laws and orders are as close to absolute as anything in a democratic society. So I thought Lakin picked the wrong forum to, to make his challenge. And I think he was misled. But I also think um, what I have found is that Obama bots, meaning pro-Obama saboteurs, sure. Our, uh, infiltrate the Lakin movement and the birther movement to goad it on and to goad on the mm-hmm. most extreme elements. Interesting. Um, you know, uh, the minute I announced that I was announcing, I came under attack from people that said I was a uh, illegal candidate. Mm-hmm. And I said, gee, I said, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I... uh, the, the, the point being, Obama infiltrates us. He has a whole dirty tricks thing. They put up a phony biography about me. Oh. Uh, they dredged up 30-year-old lawsuits to make it seem like I was out doing horrible things. Uh, he created a whole phony Andy Martin profile uh, based on things. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. You know. here I am fighting corruption and fighting cocaine-crazed federal judges, and they're trying to make me look like a bad guy. Let me come back to this idea of what if it's true. I don't think anything happens. I, I think people would shrug their shoulders and say, well, who, they're all crooked. They're all no good. They'll get rid of them at the next election. You know, the court system basically has refused to get involved. They're saying, "Don't send us your dirty laundry." But they, you voted for this clown. But yeah, but you know, and what they have turned back every time when I hear that. Wow, the courts. And I said, "No, what they have every time said you have no standing." Exactly. So it isn't that they're hearing the case. They just tell people if you file this, you have no standing. Right. In, in Hawaii, there has been an active movement to, mm-hmm. to delay my lawsuits. Yeah, I'm sure. And to and to delay the so, appeals and to cover up yeah. stuff. But so, uh, but but that's different. See, I'm the only person, by the way, that ever filed a lawsuit in Hawaii to open the files and ask the court to rule on that secrecy statute. And I'm still fighting that right. court case. So this, again, Andy Martin's here, khlw.com, please. This guy has volumes of work that's so good. He's as good as anybody and is better than most. And, I mean, I take my hat off to his knowledge and his, his critical thinking here. So creeping back into the so-called mainstream media is this story and this goofy governor of Hawaii and the Lakin case that and watching watching Chris Matthews playing hardball and he holds up the twins one of the copies of one of the twins birth certificates and says why won't they release this the, the, the historians teach us that there's always a reckoning is there a reckoning coming oh I believe so I think the reckoning uh, and I it was in my column yesterday go back and read yesterday's okay, story well. in which I say that 2012 is going to be a Showdown. rerun of 2008. Wow. We, the media lied to us in 2008. Mm-hmm. They rammed this guy down our throats. And it was an easy job, by the way. Let's not give yeah. the media too much credit, because John McCain was a doddering old fellow that yeah. didn't know what he was doing. He was confused. He was lost. And he stumbled around as a candidate. And Republicans voted for him out of loyalty mm-hmm. and legacy and not out of competence. Indeed. And uh, and he didn't. He wasn't an effective candidate. He wasn't an effective player for his team. Um, so there really wasn't a real election where he was vetted. I mean, Andy Martin was the guy going on Sean Hannity show saying these are the mm-hmm. facts. This is the story. And of course, what did I get for thanks? Yeah. Rupert Murdoch uh, stabbed me in the back, well, and Sean Hannity never yeah. came to my defense. Well, Fox News. Uh, the two gleaning examples are Bill O'Reilly and Glenn Beck, and. O'Reilly made those claims that he had seen the real proof, and then oh, yeah. Joe Farrah backs him in the corner. And, and Bill O'Reilly's telling lies. And Glenn Beck, I had a knockdown with him about it, and he went on his own show. People talking about the so-called birther, but slowly but surely, incrementally, the, you know, the karma wheel grinds, but it grinds slowly. That's a very good way to put it. It's gonna. There's there there is a reckoning coming. 